So I'm going to do the book recommendation tag. I was tagged by Nathan and Jenna, which was very kind of them. Thank you both for tagging me. The idea of a book recommendation is interesting, I think, because I think the idea implies that you're recommending something to a particular person because you know that they would really like it. So in a way, I feel like these questions aren't really prompts for book recommendations as such, because I feel like a proper book recommendation prompt should be like a book you would recommend to a person who loves thrillers or whatever. These are kind of just a list of books that I've read and all enjoyed apart from the question about a book that I didn't enjoy. Anyway, let's get into the questions. So the first question is a book that you tell people is your favourite. Um, I love the wording of this question because it's not actually asking for your favourite book, it's just asking you for the one that you tell people is your favourite. But those happen to be the same thing for me and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I first read this probably when I was like 14 or 15 maybe and loved it straight away. I've read it a few times since then and loved it every single time. I speed through this book so fast. I just find it so compulsive and fun to read, but also just the themes within it are endlessly fascinating about being a poor, ugly woman without any power, which is what Jane Eyre is at the beginning of this book, and how she moves through this world she's found herself in and gains a certain level of power by the end. And not in the most typical way that you would expect. I actually have never seen this book as a romance particularly, even though I think Jane Eyre really is in love with Mr. Rochester at a certain point of the book. I don't necessarily think she is by the end of it. Not in the typical way that we think of romance anyway, and I think that's part of the reason why I find it so fascinating. This is also one of the few classics where I don't think there's a good adaptation of it. The Mia Wasikowska movie is not bad, but all of the adaptations that I've seen really do focus on the romance because obviously they think that's what sells and it's also what a lot of people interpret this book to be about. If I was to ever become a film director, this is the one book that I would really want to adapt and do it in the way that I envision it. I haven't read this in a few years so I'm definitely due for a reread at this point. The second question is a book that is your guilty pleasure. I don't think guilty pleasures exist because those were created back in the day when we were supposed to feel embarrassed about liking particular things, which were usually female-centred type things. However, my first thought now is liking something created by someone who is not the greatest person. And so the first thing that came to me was Harry Potter. I have not read those books since I was a teenager, and I don't necessarily intend on reading them anytime soon either. I still have the whole collection hidden down at the bottom of my bookshelf. They're not the books that I read as a kid. My mum still has those. These are ones I bought ages and ages ago from an op shop back when there were so many Harry Potter books in the op shops. I never see them anymore, which is interesting. Obviously, we all know the whole story around the author of these books, and there are lots of books that I like written by authors that were probably not very nice people. Charles Dickens is a perfect example of that. He cheated on his wife, left his wife for a younger woman, and I absolutely love his novels, but I guess the biggest difference of course is that he is long dead and J.K. Rowling is still alive and profiting off the Harry Potter stories very much. But there's no denying that Harry Potter was a huge part of my childhood. I loved the books when I read them, I enjoyed the films, my sister and I and our friends would play Harry Potter all the time, we had so many toys, we used chopsticks as wands, my grandmother made us cloaks, and we loved that whole world. And why wouldn't you? It's such a fully realised world with so many intricacies to it. Sure, they're all taken from previous stories and fables, but I don't really see an issue with that side of it because storytelling really is just taking what already exists and trying to make something new out of it. And she very successfully did that. So many stories are derivative in that way. Part of the reason for me, I think, why I love them so much as well is because the things I was interested in as a child or the things I was exposed to as a child were not necessarily things that people my own age were also enjoying. There's a lot of popular culture from my childhood that I've had to learn as an adult because I just didn't engage with it at the time because my family did not engage with it. But Harry Potter was one of the few things that I knew everything about and I could talk to pretty much anyone my own age unless they were like hardcore Christian and weren't allowed to read 
Harry Potter and they would know what I was talking about and it was an amazing way of relating to people my own age at a time when I very much struggled with that. If I was to read Harry Potter now, I'm sure I would notice all the things that other people have picked up on that are problematic with these stories, but I know that I would still enjoy them because what I remember, they're still really great stories. They definitely feel to me like they would be the epitome of a guilty pleasure but I'm definitely not going to read them anytime soon. It really goes to that whole thing of how much can you detach a story from its creator. And I think in my mind, while the creator is still alive and making profits, it's a lot harder to make that detachment. Question number three is a book everyone loved, but you didn't. I have picked Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. It's so weird because I watched this film years before I read the book and I really love the film. Anthony Hopkins and Emma Thompson are amazing in it and I'd read some other Kazuo Ishiguro and really enjoyed them so I was just very surprised to find that I found this so boring. It was such a slog to get through. I couldn't care about the main character, this butler protagonist who's so stuck in his ways and stiff upper lip that he just isn't even capable of feeling emotions. I don't know, I felt like the narrative of the book was very different from the film, but because I read and watched them so far apart, I couldn't really compare them properly. Usually I don't keep books that I didn't enjoy, but I just, I'm keeping onto this one because I feel like maybe if I read it at a different time, I might understand what everyone else is seeing in the book and also just because I clearly do enjoy the story because I enjoyed the film but maybe the film changed a lot of stuff. I think one day I would like to return to it and do a contrast and compare and sort of make a final decision on it. Question four is a book that you read the fastest. I picked Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. I don't have a copy of this because my sister is in possession of the Howl's Moving Castle books as they are her favourite books. I've read this a few times and I just read it within a day pretty much. The book is quite different from the movie in terms of its plot and actually in terms of its characterizations as well but I feel like they have the same tone and they do live within the same universe even though they're such different tellings of the same story. The book is very British and has that sense of humour within it that makes it really fun. The sort of fantasy level is exactly the level I enjoy where it's like basically a normal sort of human society but there's a bit of magic in it and it's also set in this sort of faux Victorian era which I always very much enjoy and it really is a great love story. For a children's book it's astonishing how effective the love story is I think. Diana Wynne Jones's books tend to end in a way that I find quite unsatisfactory. She sets up these amazing plots and worlds and then feels like she just runs out of steam or doesn't really know how to end them and so I find the endings often are very vague and I feel like How's Moving Castle is probably her best book in that it's the least vague ending even though right now I probably couldn't tell you what that ending was which just means I have to read it again obviously. Question number five is a book that deserves more hype. I've kind of picked this as a representative as an author that I think deserves more hype even though she's an incredibly famous author. Um, this is The Robber Bride by Margaret Atwood and obviously Margaret Atwood is hugely famous. She is one of the first adult authors that I really got into and so I've read a lot of her books. Obviously she's most famous for The Handmaid's Tale which is a great book but her dystopian novels are not my favourite. I love her, I don't know how you'd classify it, like domestic fiction I guess but they're just books about women in Canada and I think they're so well written, they're so amazing. Perhaps reading them now wouldn't hit quite the same as reading them 12 years ago. As I said, some of my first adult novels that I was reading and the way they talk about being a woman is just so accurate and nuanced and just interesting even though they were written quite a while ago and so perhaps I would find some of the writing a little bit old-fashioned but then maybe not. This one was published in 1994 this is sort of based loosely on a fairy tale about the robber princess I think is the original story, I can't remember. It's about three friends who all have interactions with this one woman and the whole book is kind of just telling the entire history of these three women which I think could in another person's hands come across as a bit tedious. I tend to not like books that want to tell the entire story of someone's life 
but I found the way Margaret Atwood did it in this book so interesting and so involving. I haven't read this for so long that I absolutely need to read it again. And yeah, in terms of being underhyped, I feel like Margaret Atwood weirdly is not talked about much on booktube and I think she should be because I think some of her books are just some of the best books I've ever read. She has a lot of duds as well, I have to say, but the ones that are good are amazing. Question 6 is a book that is becoming a movie or TV show, which the only ones I can think of is The Chronicles of Narnia. Netflix has held on to the rights for the adaptations for these for so long, and I was thinking they just weren't going to end up doing anything with them, but then it just came out recently that Greta Gerwig is apparently signed on to direct at least two adaptations of these books, which is quite astonishing to me because they are such British books. And to have an American like Greta Gerwig, who I feel like has quite an American sensibility, I think will be very weird. Though I'm still very curious to see if and when that happens, um, how those turn out. I reread this series so much when I was a kid. These are the books that I read, apart from The Last Battle, which actually I didn't own when I was a child. I recently bought this on eBay as well as a saga around buying this particular book, which I won't get into now because it's too long a story to fit in this video. I really love these books. My mum said that I was apparently named after Lucy in these books, or at least she read these books and liked the name and that's where it came from. When I was a kid, I had no idea about the religious references. Obviously didn't think about the fact that Aslan is literally Jesus at all because I didn't know anything about religion particularly, which I find really interesting when something can be such an obvious allegory or metaphor or whatever it is, how you can still read the books just on their own. I definitely want to do a reread of this whole series soon, especially in preparation for the adaptations, even though they're probably not going to come out for so many years. Question 7 is a book that you reread the most. I reread all my books when I was a kid so many times. Like, I would say I've read some of these books that I still have. 50 times or more. I would just cycle through them and read them all the time, as well as reread books from the library. So I could literally pick any of them, but I decided to go with the Asterix comics because I did read those a lot when I was a kid. They are actually my dad's comics from when he was a kid. He also has most of the Tintin series as well, so I read a lot of those, but Asterix was always just a little bit more my favourite because the humour is a bit more obvious, I think. I would love to read those comics again. They're so funny. I always loved history as a kid, so I felt like you kind of were learning a little bit of history about that era, just in terms of like all the places that the Romans conquered, basically. The English translations as well are so well done that there are apparently jokes in the English versions that aren't in the French versions, just because of the wordplay that the translator used. And I remember when I got slightly older, I eventually realised all the jokes within their names as well, which is not something I picked up on when I first read them. I think Cacophonix as the bard who cannot sing is probably one of my favourites, and Unhygienix as the fishmonger is just genius. Those books are very nostalgic for me and really are such a good introduction to the idea of um, anti-colonialism, so I think they're great for kids to read. Question 8 is a book from a genre that you don't typically read. I picked Carrie by Stephen King because I really don't read any horror at all. Stephen King has a bit of a reputation in terms of some of the content of his books, but the fact that Carrie was his first novel, which is about a girl getting her period, is just so funny and iconic to me. I read Stephen King's book about writing and he talks about writing Carrie and that his wife really encouraged him to write this book because she thought it was so unique and different. I don't think Carrie is necessarily the most well-written book, but the concept is so engaging and Stephen King's writing is just very readable. To see all those teenage girl emotions on the page is so fascinating and it sort of goes to show that, you know, anyone can write any character. They just have to give them real emotions and not rely on stereotypes. I really would like to read more of Stephen King's really famous books, but a lot of them are really long, so I just haven't. And weirdly, the library doesn't have that many. For someone who's such a famous author, I find it very odd that his books are not in my library. But after reading his book about writing and how much I agree with the way that he approaches writing, I feel like I should read more of his novels. Question 9 is a book that deserves all the hype it gets, and I picked My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfeg. This is not actually the copy that I read. I read it from the library, of course, and then I found this in an op shop few months later and I was 
very excited because it looks completely unread even though it's very dusty. I have only read this once but I thought it was an amazing book and I haven't really enjoyed any of Mosh Fegg's other books but this just hit the spot. The narrator's voice within this, the concept of sleeping for a year, I think especially at the time was so enticing to me. I could have slept for a year and been very happy about it or at least I thought so at the time. I think tonally it's pitched so perfectly that it is a little weird and strange but still just works as a fun fast-paced read as well. I think it absolutely deserves all the hype. I think it's a great book. Number 10 is a question that is actually about recommendations and it is a book you usually recommend when asked to give a recommendation. So there's one book that I would actually recommend to most people who enjoy reading and that is Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I think this is a perfect recommendation because it is, is popular fiction the right term for the genre? I'm not really sure. General fiction? It's definitely not literary fiction anyway, but it's still a great read and a great story. Of course we all know the TV series with Reese Witherspoon and Nicole Kidman. That's obviously an American adaptation, but this is an Australian book set in the north coast of Sydney. I find it so interesting that they managed to create such an American TV show out of something that I think is so specifically Australian in that it's about wealthy rich people in New South Wales People from Sydney and wealthy people from New South Wales are a particular breed. You obviously have Shailene Woodley's character. I can't remember the actual character's names, but she comes in as the poorer single mum and is introduced to this world. It also features a death and a police investigation. So you have that side of it as well, really propelling the story forward. But it really goes deep into issues around domestic violence and you know, women's position in this society, things hidden behind closed doors. Everything looks amazing on the surface, but is not so great underneath. I have not read any other Leanne Moriarty novels and I think I even picked one up and tried to read it and couldn't get past the first page. I think there's something very unique about this book and she just got it particularly right and balanced everything perfectly. I think anyone would enjoy it. It's a book that kind of surpasses its own genre in a way. Not that I think it's like better than its genre or anything, I just think it's a really good example of a genre. It's what this genre should be in that it is fast paced and easy to read and really engrossing but also just has a great characterization and really believable characterization as well which I think is the key to its success. Question number 12 is a book that has your favorite character. I picked A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. When I was a kid I loved Sarah Crew who is the main character in this book. I wanted to be exactly like her because she very much uses her imagination to get through life. She starts off as very wealthy having everything given to her and yet somehow is not spoiled by it because her dad brought her up right I guess. And then her dad dies and she goes into complete poverty and uses her imagination and her sort of strength of character that she has which is a little bit unbelievable for a child of her age but anyway to get her through those very hard times. Using my imagination was something I did a lot as a kid obviously. I barely existed in the real world. I was constantly imagining everything was something that it wasn't. So I very much related to her. I have read this book as an adult and I still loved it. I think it's such a well-crafted story. It's such a like Edwardian fairy tale in a way. This is the copy of the book I got when I was, I think I must have been eight years old because on the back it says it's for ages nine and up. And I think I remember joking that I wasn't old enough to read this book, which is obviously nonsensical. Like there's nothing in this book that younger children couldn't read. And I actually got a locket necklace with this book because this was like a whole series where you got a necklace and that was very exciting to me. Question 12 is a book that you wish you could live in and I picked The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem. I read this book a few years ago and I loved it even though I would say that the ending is not as good as it could have been for sure. But I was so Enchanted as the title suggests by the setting and the characters that I didn't really mind it at the time. But this is about a group of British women who decide that they're going to rent out a villa in Italy and leave their husbands behind. And they go in April, obviously it's spring and April in the Northern Hemisphere. The descriptions of this Italian villa and the gardens and the weather. I remember reading this in the middle of winter but it was a particularly sunny like part of winter so I was sitting in the sun which you can't do in summer here because it's too hot and you will literally get skin cancer. But I do sit in the sun in winter with a lot of sunscreen on and it was just such a delightful experience and 
I absolutely want to be inside this book. There's very few books that you probably would want to be inside because usually something bad is happening, but nothing particularly serious happens in this book. They're literally just at a villa having a nice time for the most of it and dealing with some personal issues, but I obviously wouldn't have to deal with the personal issues. I could just be in the background having a great holiday while they're all like doing the plot, you know? Question 13 is a book you thought you would hate but ended up loving. This was kind of hard to pick because I don't generally pick up books that I think I'm going to hate. It's usually the reverse and then I get disappointed. But a book that I wasn't too sure about and I also read about 12 years ago is Cloud Street by Tim Winton. And this is mainly because my mum hates Tim Winton. She really hates his writing. He's a local West Australian author. He was just pretty big a few years ago. I mean, he's still kind of big now, but he was one of the big authors when he was writing his most famous novels, especially as there just aren't that many really famous Australian authors. And so obviously I went into that knowing that she really hated this book and hated the writing style, but I actually really enjoyed it. And again, it was another one of those books where it was one of my first adult novels and doesn't have quotation marks either but I was very proud of myself I managed to get through that and it's a really sweeping epic saga about these two families that live in Perth in the 1940s and just talks about the various trials and tribulations that they go through. I loved reading something set in my own city especially something set in the past as well I think it was the first book I read set in Perth and I've only read a handful anyway because there really aren't that many set here. All the characters are really quite varied and interesting. It really is a proper saga and you can definitely see why it's one of the most famous Australian books. I kind of need to get another copy because this is like the TV version. I think I bought this at the time the TV show was on even though I never actually ended up watching it. It's not too bad for a TV show cover I have to say but I would rather have a nicer cover. Question 14 is a book that made you cry. I think I've said before that books never make me cry. I cry at films all the time but never books. They're just not that emotionally involving for me. But the one book that I do remember crying at is The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. Another book that I probably read 12 years ago. This is a hugely famous novel. Everyone knows it. It's about a young girl living in Germany during World War II. It's all about book burnings and is narrated by the character of death. This is another book that does deserve the hype. It's a very, very good book and it's obviously super sad at the end. I actually don't really remember the details of the story that well, having read it that long ago. I think I was like reading it coming home from uni and then had only a few pages left. So I kind of just like sat out on the back porch in the sun and finished it off and bawled my eyes out. Another book that I would like to read again soon. And the very last question is a book you wish you could read for the first time. I picked another Kazuo Ishiguro, the one that I do actually really love, which is Never Let Me Go. I can't remember if this is true or not, but I think I watched the film before I read the book or at least I was aware of the plot of the film. And so I feel like I went into this book knowing a bit too much because what's amazing about this book is knowing absolutely nothing and really getting a shock when the twist happens. And so I wish I could read this game for the first time just not knowing anything about it because I think that would be an incredible experience. It's about a group of students in a boarding school growing up in Britain somewhere. You don't know exactly when it's set, but it feels very old-fashioned even though I think they talk about cassettes and stuff in the book and they seemingly have this pretty idyllic childhood until they grow up and you realize what this whole world is actually about and it's such a dark and fascinating story and I also think the film is really good as well. Definitely one I will reread regardless of the fact that I do you already know the twist? So that is the end of the tag. I will tag some people in the description box because I can't remember who's done this tag or not. Feel free to do this tag if you are watching and want to do it, but I'd really love to know your answer to question 10, a book you usually recommend when asked to give a recommendation, because I think that's actually such a fascinating question. It's a really hard one because it's about picking a book that you think most people would enjoy and I'd be really fascinated to see other people's responses to this who haven't done this tag already. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you next time. Bye!